Hello, and welcome to Kit's Photography. I'm Kit, the photographer for Bremat Photography here in sunny South Australia. Welcome to my channel. Hello and welcome to this episode of Kits Photography. This time I'm doing something rather special, which is I've come down to Port Adelaide to see the clipper ship, the City of Adelaide, which you'll see behind me. Now, the wonderful thing about this ship, it was built in the UK, came backwards and forwards again and again between the UK and Adelaide, bringing goods, bringing people eventually. That ship there could fit 300 passengers as well as cargo. And eventually it changed hands again and again and again. It even became a Navy ship with cannons and all sorts of things. But eventually it ended up sinking in the UK, was rescued and brought back to Adelaide, which is absolutely lovely. So it's being restored here at the moment and uh, let's go and have a look inside. So I'm here at the back of the city of Adelaide right now, and this is actually the place where the rudder attaches. Now, I'll show you the rudder in a minute, but the thing that's really fascinating about it is that the rudder was actually lost over near Kangaroo Island here in South Australia. And they, the theory is, is the only way that it could have possibly come off was a whale pushed it up because Huge big pins held it in place just here, but you can't really lift that out while it's in the water. But it happened. So I'll show you that later on though. But you can see as well, all these nail holes here, there are hundreds of thousands of nails all through this ship. And that's where the copper plating on the outside has been nailed on. It's absolutely remarkable. It must have taken years and years and years to do it properly. It's quite remarkable. They're absolutely all over it. With a little creative photography, you can bring anything to life. For these rudder mounts, all it takes is a little bit of depth of field and some colour. Although steamships were being built around this time, they couldn't quite match the speed of clipper ships. They had so much on board in their storage areas that places were limited. So clipper ships of this time were made with an iron frame internally, but a wooden hull, which meant that a copper plating could be placed on the exterior of the wooden housing, making it streamlined and resistant to barnacle infestation. The iron ships of the time were greatly slowed by a build-up of barnacles. However, this wood and copper design was fast and efficient, with millions and millions of nails to hold the copper sheeting on. All the while, underneath the copper, a horsehair and felt layer which provided a layer of waterproofing. From the bow, one can really see how many millions of nails there are which were used to hold on the copper sheeting. 
However, you can also see the remains of the felt and horsehair lining between the boards. From this angle, you can see the remains of hemp rope, which has been dipped in tar and then hammered in between the boards. Unfortunately, over time, this has been drying out, which is causing it to fall out of the hull gradually. You can also see the bolts which hold the boards together. So, let's go and have a look inside. Most ships of this time would have timber ribs, however, the city of Adelaide has steel ribs because it's really over-designed, which is the reason why it survived this long. This is the remains of the crew cabin reserved for single males. Not a lot of headroom and very little space. This is where the original Ford mast went. You can see the iron circular disc to hold it in place. Now looking at the ceiling, you can see it's deteriorated quite a lot. However, this lime green was actually the original colour. You can see here, the beams have deteriorated quite substantially. However, that's what they look like. The city of Adelaide has had an extraordinary life, or should I say lives, having been used for so many different duties throughout its lifetime. So between 1893 and 1923, this ship was actually a hospital ship. And you can see behind me here, there's an example of what it may have looked like. Going up a small staircase now, we reach an area which is off limits to the public. It was originally the first class cabins. Later it was converted to the officer's lounge for the Royal Navy. If you look up you can see the metal joists which are prevalent in the lower decks have been cut so that the first class travellers had more headroom and wouldn't bump their head like the 300 passengers would on the deck below. These glass prisms refract the light through the ceiling into the first class cabins. So you can see a porthole behind me here. That's basically what provides the light. Now, these are not the original portholes. They were put in after it was used as a, a ship for shipping goods because they're actually below the plimsoll line, meaning that if you had a full load, the ship would sink. And you can imagine how dark and dank it would have been in this ship when there was so, so little light down here, especially with all the animals and the absolute stench of it all would have been hot and sweaty and loud with the 300 people upstairs as well. One can really see the metal in the hull, the skeleton as such of the ship with the wood on the bottom and how it could be used in such a practical way. So the ship itself sank in the UK in about 1991 and it spent, it spent a year submerged in mud and water which significantly deteriorated structure. Now, the one saving grace is that because this ship had so many lives, it had been essentially restored again and again and again. So you can see throughout the, the, whole, the whole ship areas 
where the steel has been replaced with much stronger steel. For instance, when it became a Navy ship, they had to be able to have guns on board, so they had to be able to hold that weight. So let's go and have a look at that. So you can see those three pillars there. They're original pillars that are used to hold up the roof. Now, if we look to the left, you can see this steel, great big thick steel. Now that was put in by the Royal Navy when it was purchased as a Navy ship. Now that's the plimsoll line just there. And these windows were put in when it became a hospital ship. But as you can see, they're actually below the plimsoll line. And the windows downstairs are even lower again. That is an original porthole. Now it's very, very small. The amount of light that would have produced is so little you'd hardly be able to see a thing. This is the rudder I mentioned earlier, which supposedly got pushed off by a whale around Kangaroo Island. With a bit of creative photography, anyone can make their images look superb. With this, I just adjusted the colours and look what I got. There's truly fascinating wood grain and marks in the ship here. Great for photography, those nails I was talking about, you can really get some superb shots. Things like the areas around here with broken bits, they make really, really nice photographs. Now this wonderful place does actually have a bit of a touristy vibe as well. Uh, they're always trying to get people to come through and look at the history. There's a gift shop, there's all sorts of lovely things, there's scientific things, there's boat things, you can even make a little boat and put it in a bottle, all sorts of things. It's absolutely lovely, it's very reasonable and kids are free as well, which is wonderful. So thank you so much for watching this episode of Kits Photography. I'll be back next time. Please don't forget to like and subscribe and I'll see you then. Get out of my office. <laughs>